Knife review. Spider Co. Tatanka. Tatanka. That's what we're going to talk about. Hey, nothing fancy. I bet you love that knife because you love large blades. I wonder how many thousands of TMPers thought that when they saw the Tatanka come out. I bet you lots. Well, let's talk about it. What do you think, Nutton? You're going to have to wait to the end of the video for my absolute bottom line. Actually, my absolute bottom line is the likability scale, which is in the bottom of the video, in the write-up portion. And that is actually subject to change, because maybe I find out something about the knife, the gun, the gear item, whatever, and I'll change my likability scale. I won't change the video. You'll always have to look at that. And nowadays, I put the likability scale in after the videos that been out a month, two months. Then I'll put it in. Tatanka, though, is, then let's just be honest, it is trying to compete against the behemoth that is Cold Steel when it comes to large tactical folders. You know, usually I'll wait to the end of the video to talk about competitive options. We kind of got to put it, you know, bring out the bull in the china shop right now because. In past years, I have said over and over again that Cold Steel owns the large tactical folder market. I'm talking production quality, uh, or not quality, but protection style of knives. Beautiful Espadas, Spartans, here comes a Recon 1 XL. Beautiful knives. Functional, tough with their triad locks. I think they serve a purpose. I'd much rather carry one of these super large knives, great size comparison on the table by the way, for, I have to say the T word, tactical reasons, self-defense reasons. Comes a G10 Espada by the way, bead blasted, it came out in black by the way for uh, 2015. I'd much rather carry one of these. If I know a fight's coming, I'm going to carry a big blade. What do I have EDC today? Not planned. Uh, and this is a great knife. This is a Kershaw 1870. It's more of an EDC knife, but it's also tactical in some ways. Beautiful knife. Love the OD coloration. Great knife. But if bad people are coming to hurt me, I'll take one of these big knives. Remember, Marshall Bladecraft guys, they, they sometimes don't like a big blade. It's not as maneuverable because of their parries, their techniques they utilize. They like a smaller blade. Okay, but let's go back to the Tatanka's reason for being. Its reason for being is to make money for Spyderco. Duh. You ever think of that? Hey, man, they're really passionate about this blade. Uh, maybe, but they really want a piece of the pie. They see what Cold Steel has been doing. Uh, and I'll say with my help, because I've been promoting these large blades of Cold Steel's for a long time. And when I first started doing it, there was a lot of criticism against it. They were like, big blades are dumb. We don't need them. It's stupid. Who needs that? And, and before TMP, I saw it in the forums a lot. But now they're more accepted. Now a lot of guys see their purpose for being mostly defensive use. But that's why the Tatanka came out. They're like, hey, we're going to make a C-180 Tatanka because they wanted the piece of the pie. As consumers, you win. That's a good thing because you have a choice and you know I love Spyderco. I mean, I've spent hours and hours talking about the awesomeness of many Spyderco designs. Let's jump into POU. Uh, fighter. It's a fighting knife. Could it do that task? What do you think? Nothing. Well, I've always said, I'm not a knife fighter. I, I can't even fathom having to use a knife that well that way to be totally honest with you guys it just turns my stomach there I said it I, I don't like it but go back to my vi video fear no evil and it's kind of like that there's wicked people in this world that do bad things okay what are you going to do wave a magic a magic wand and make all evil go away it doesn't work that way people sometimes are hell bent on destroying other people Good people. That's why we have weapons. I like to think that people who watch TMP are good people. They're sheepdogs of society, military, for constitution law enforcement, responsible civilians, contractors, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, lawyers, tradesmen of all sorts and descriptions, auto, auto mechanics, plumbers, 
farmers, the good people of this world that make this world work. Sometimes those good people will need a weapon. End of rant, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. It's, I say it because it's been a while since I've reiterated that. And if someone rolls in a video and we're talking about defensive use, maybe stabbing someone, what we're talking about in context, that things are bad. That whether it's a gun, a baseball bat, a knife, does it really matter what you defend your life with? Eh, come on, get real. It doesn't. I mean, it's brutal. I don't like thinking about it. It still turns my stomach. But what if? You know, what if this is the only tool I have on my person? Could it get the job done? Absolutely. I think the Tatanka is very impressive in its fighting capabilities. Very. You'll see it has almost perfect traction. It's large. It's easy to grasp onto. It has a certain amount of reach. Enough said. How about this? Impress your friends collectible. I've talked about that lots. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Folding survival knife? Maybe. We'll talk about the lockup of this. When you talk about a folding knife that is going to be survival, wilderness capable, be careful because nothing fancy just may go out in the woods and test your claim. And I've broken ones that have said they're this or that. Uh, the Hest comes to mind, and that failed miserably. The DPX Hest. Uh, sorry, if, you, if you're going to make the claim, I just may test it, as probably hundreds of others do as well. I, I don't know. I, the locking mechanism is too new. This is on loan, so I, I did not thump this for this test. Sorry. Possibly it could be a folding survival knife. EDC? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm I am genuinely laughing at the thought of someone EDCing a spider code to Tonka. What are you talking about? I EDC it all the time. I was just cutting a muffin top off with it and it rocked. No, this rocks for EDC, dude. Microtech, Ultratech. That's a great EDC knife. And I'm still carrying this. Sorry, I get addicted to it. No, this is not the TMP version. This is just generic black. I showed another video the other day. That, that's more in line. Let's talk about some things I'm not super stoked on the knife. There are some, there are some things, sorry. First off, it's 9.4 ounces. That fancy, you pussy. I mean, it's a big knife. What do you expect? <laughs> you like my voices, I do? Uh, well, I kind of expect, well, I expect a really super big knife like this. It has an aluminum frame to weigh about that. This is exactly the same weight. The Cold Steel Espada Aluminum. Well, 9.8. We'll call it the same. But it's an aluminum frame knife. Um, you know, some of those other ones I showed on the table are going to be a lot less. 8.4 for the G10 Espada. Are we splitting hairs? I mean, it's just an ounce, nothing. Eh, probably. It's probably. But how about the Spider Co Resilience, dude? 5.2. Let's do a size comparison, incidentally. Okay, that's a smaller knife. I give you that. But 9.4, it's kind of kind of heavy, albeit it is a big blade, but it's not massive. I threw the other ones on the table, right? As a reminder, here's a Recon XL. I would carry this one over that one. Uh, I would. Just because I like it. It's lighter in hand. Uh, do I have the weight of this one? Yeah, 8.2 ounces. So this is almost 2 ounces lighter than that one. And you can see the blade's even bigger. And it's full flat grind. Where does that weight come from? Well, here's my theory, and that's all it is. First and foremost, there's a lot of metal in this grind. You can see it's a thick blade, right? It's a 5-inch blade. And it's just really thick right here. That's one place. The other one is, it is fully steel lined, albeit I will say Spyderco, as they have been doing for years, did a marvelous job of skeletonizing those liners. 420 stainless steel liners. So you add this chunk of metal with the liners, a big comfortable grip, you get a 9.4 ounce knife. 11 inches overall length. It's a big knife. People write, oh the Tatanka is so big. I didn't bring it, but I was going to bring that super massive Espada and some other ones like the Rajas out. I don't have them on the table, but those are big knives. So let's let's kind of keep it real. It's a big knife, but it's not the biggest, nor is it like hugely, I don't know, uncontrollable. 
The feel is excellent, actually. A little bit forward on the blade, as you can imagine, because of the weight. But I love the feel, and I really love the long handle. All types of grips. You can actually extend it out to get even better reach with it and lock it in like that. We've talked about that with a lot of reviews. VG10 is a steel. I like VG10. I will say this, and this is an update. VG10 is kind of a softer steel, and it requires a lot of sharpening. Boom. There's your update. There's a lot of better options out there that are just as equally rust resistant. When I started raving about VG10 back in 08, there were fewer options. It's still an awesome backpacking steel. It's very rust resistant. It does go dull relatively quickly. You know, like I said in a, a bracketed review, Colt Steel is starting to use Carpenter XHP, as is a lot of others, including Spyderco, by the way, I think. And that might be a little better option, maybe one of the CPM steels. You get it. Okay, you have an unsharpened swedge coming here. Very strong tip. That's your blade. Nice belly, nice reach. It'll penetrate cut amazingly, I have no doubt. How about the speed? I was trying to do the liner lock disengagement. Um, I will say the speed is good. I wouldn't say it's amazing because it's a lot of metal that you're deploying. It's exactly what I mentioned. This has to be overcome. And so, you know, just like anything, you got to practice with it. But it's a big blade. I, and my impression is the Colt Steels, the Voyager, for instance, I just grabbed this, it's not planned, come out a lot quicker. It's my two cents. Uh, it is. The lockup. It's called the Power Lock. Okay, and they are competing with Andrew Demko's Triad Lock. Uh, duh. Can we be honest? They can't obviously copy that, so they come up with their own interpretation. In other words, a way to take all the stresses off the lock bar. They have an intermediate mechanical device there. Blade stops on a stop pin, spring lever rotates, a cam into position, cam wedges against concave surface, lock up. There's your stop pin by the way. Uh, it seems fine. You know, it's, it's not original, not in its function, I should say, in its design, no doubt, because the triad lock does the same thing. Right? It does. And I think the triad lock is a more elegant design. There, I said it. Don't apologize. Strength seems excellent. No wiggle at all. Up, down, blah, blah, blah. Handle construction we talked about. Stainless steel backspacer. There's some of your weight, by the way, right there. Has a shallow guard here. Four choil here. Excellent jimping on the top. Locks your hand in. Fully skeletonized liners. Let's look at blade retention and centering. On the Tatanka. Centering is phenomenal. Retention is excellent. Kind of an important thing with me personally. Where's that scar I'm wearing? It's around there somewhere. It's all in my hand. Yeah, ergonomics, I think, really lend itself to a fighter. I mentioned that. Look how you can lock on. We talked about extending the handle, reverse grip, all that cool stuff. Different deployment options. If you train with it, deadly. No doubt. Excellent clip. Standard Spidey clip we see. Four-way positionable. It's a good lefty knife with the spider hole, uh, spider hole deployment. Value options. You saw them already. And I'm not going to introduce or talk about each one. I still love the resilience. It's less expensive. Right? And by the way, this knife is not cheap. About 160 bucks. Look in the top. That's my recommended retailer. If you dig it, go buy it there. 160 is not super inexpensive. For this particular knife, it's put together in Seiki City, Japan, in case you're wondering. The quality from what I'm seeing is excellent. Standard, you know, Torx construction there. Back to the resilience. So this to me is more EDCable, even though it's large. Perfect jimping, much lighter pillar construction. I just love the resilience. I love the tenacious the resilience. The whole line is just excellent. 8CR 13 MOV, so it's going to be a different steel. steel. I love 8CR though other competitive options you've seen already they're generally going to be found in the cold steel lineup because a lot of manufacturers to this date are scared of putting a large pretty much dedicated folding fighting knife isn't that what we're talking about these are folding fighting knives maybe not the resilience so much but it could be but these other ones are the espada absolutely that's their intent that's what they're put together for and some manufacturers like i've said in, in past years they're scared of that Hey, let's do a size comparison. What do you say? I'm going to roll in, what is this, the Bravo 2? I need to review this sucker. CPM 3V Bark River. Let's see how that stacks up against the freaking Tatanka. Dude! 
<laughs> oh my gosh, the Tatanka is as big as that. Of course, we line up the blade. You can see the blade's longer. But overall length, it's... I really like the long handle. I thought that'd be a fun comparison. Call me crazy. A lot of these knives on the table, the point I was going to get to, are going to be less expensive than this one, the Tatanka. They're going to be just as strong, if not stronger. They're going to deploy faster. They're going to be lighter weight to carry. They won't be spider codes though. And some guys love spider codes and they're going to hold out for spider codes. And I totally get it. I'm a spider co raging fan, by the way. Uh, however, I will give you an honest review. Honest. Totally. Uh, I think it's a good effort. If it weighed like seven ounces in its current length and it had a different grind like FFG. Uh, and watch. Watch them do this now that I've talked about on tabletop. Uh, I think they would sell more. So just make it a, like an XXL Endura. So make it just like this and super light. Put titanium liners in it. Oh, I like that idea. Purple titanium liners. That would add a second kind of cool. And then what are we gonna put on for handle scales? If we're gonna, oh, you can use black, just like this. By the way, it's medium traction D10. I forgot to say that, it's okay. Um, with purple, that'd be good. You could do FDE, kind of like the Calypso, the brown G10, and do purple. That would be a very cool look. Full flat ground, and maybe shave an ounce and a half off it. Whatever you have to do, shave an ounce and a half off it. Make it as big as this, then I would buy it. There you go. The bottom line, like I said, dudes, is my likability scale. I love to see that Spyderco is putting out large knives. I really do. I'm excited about it. For a first large fighting style of knife, I think it's an outstanding effort. That's my review. See ya!